بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وافضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على شرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين قال المصنف رحم الله تعالى ونفعنا الله تعالى به ثم يجب له تعالى سبع صفات تسمى صفات المعاني وهي القدرة والإرادة المتعلقان بجميع الممكنات this is where we stopped last week where we were talking about sifatul maani the qualitative attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first two attributes we mentioned were al qudratu divine power and al iradatu divine will and the author rahimahullah ta'ala states al mutaalliqani bi jami' al mumkinat that these two attributes are associated with all possibilities meaning the divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not instantiate bring into existence impossibilities and in the same way the divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not connected to necessary things if we said the divine power is associated with impossibilities bringing impossibilities into existence then those impossibilities will no longer remain impossible but will become possible so the mustahil the impossible would become mumkin and if we said the divine power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is connected with necessary things then this would mean the necessary would no longer remain necessary but would become possible therefore the divine power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only connected to possibilities this is another reasoning behind this belief and al irada to divine will is also connected to possibilities not to impossibilities and necessities when there are two matters which are possible the divine will will make the decision of which of those two matters will come into existence and the divine power al qudratu will instantiate bring into existence that which has been selected so the divine will will bring in will will or bring about the choice of which of the two possible uh, two possibilities will be brought into existence the divine power will instantiate that bring it into existence this is the difference between the two so existence or non existence is determined by the divine will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his divine will will make the decision of either bringing something into existence or taking it out of existence and al qudra divine power will instantiate bring into existence that thing also what we mentioned was wal ilmu al mutaalliq bi jami' al wajibat wal jaizat wal mustahilat that divine knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is attached to essential things permissible things and impossible things why is this because the divine attribute of knowledge is not an effective attribute sifa mu'athira allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing we will do something does not mean he has forced us to do something now the mu'tazila an early sect in islam they held the position that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his divine will will associate with those things which will not happen for instance the iman the belief of abu jahl or abu lahab they believed that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the divine will 
of the faith of Abu Jahl. But this in effect would lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being demoted to, to being incapable of making Abu Jahl or Abu Lahab believe. While the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew of the disbelief of Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tasked them to believe gave them the taklif the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them mukallaf to believe but he knew they will not believe however he did not have the divine will of them believing al irada if he had willed that they believe then they would have believed this is a difference between mu'tazila and ahl sunnati wal jama'ah so the ahl sunnah wal jama'ah will say that the divine will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will will bring into existence whatever he wills while the mu'tazila they say that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for something it is not necessary for it to come into existence this of course is logically absurd this claim of the mu'tazila is absurd then the author states wal hayatu wahiya la tata'allaqu bi shay'in the attribute of divine life wahiya la tata'allaqu bi shay'in this attribute is not connected to anything what this means is al irada for instance divine will will connect itself to possibilities whether that possibility has been given existence or not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his divine will will determine what should come into existence and what should go out of existence divine power al-qudra is attached to those things which are brought into existence al-ilm divine knowledge will be connected to possible possibilities impossibilities and necessities while al hayatu is not connected to anything but remember ahl sunnati wal jama'ah state regarding these uh, attributes that they are al qa'ima bi dhat al qa'ima bi dhat which means established with the being of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or established with the self of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these attributes based upon this reasoning the mu'tazila rejected these attributes they said how can you ascribe attributes to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are eternal this in turn would lead to numerous eternal beings so the ahl sunnati wal jama'a replied by saying we do not believe these attributes are independent beings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no they are div divine attributes established with the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that meaning the self of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are not independent beings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the Mu'tazila held the position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qadir with his that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is murid with his that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim with his that they did not believe uh, that al-qudra al-irada al-ilm these are divine attributes they said everything is his that meaning him being all-knowing him being all-powerful him being uh, all-willing all these are not attributes but are the self the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a distinction between the beliefs of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and the mu'tazila but when we say al hayatu the attribute of divine life this attribute is not connected to anything but it validates for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have these divine attributes because if he did not have the divine attribute of al-hayat divine life then he could not be murid 
he willing, he could not be Qadir all powerful, he could not be Al-Alim all knowing. It validates for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be described with these divine attributes. Then the author states, وَالسَّمْعُ وَالْبَصَرُ الْمُتَعَلِّقَانِ بِجَمِيعِ الْمَوْجُودَاتِ That divine hearing and divine sight that are attached to all existing things. To all existing things. These attributes of divine hearing and divine sight are established from textual evidence. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Or, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That there is nothing like him, yet he is all hearing and all seeing. This is from a textual source from the Qur'an. Otherwise, if rationally speaking, a person would, by ascribing knowledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or affirming knowledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person could not infer the attribute of hearing and seeing. But hearing and seeing are divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does this mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses organs? We already covered the attribute مُخَالَفَتُهُ hawadith That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in opposition to contingent things. O al-qiyamu bin nafs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-established. This would mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have and does not need organs in order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hear everything. He subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need an ear, an instrument or a tool in order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see everything. He subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need an organ, an eye or an instrument or a tool. Also, the divine hearing and divine sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is connected to everything which is beyond what we conceive as being sight and hearing. For instance, our hearing is limited to sound waves, to what our organ, uh, our ear can pick up, our eardrums can pick up, the waves our ear uh, can detect. but the divine hearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond this. The divine sight is beyond what we pick up. We pick up colors and shapes. The divine, when we say sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-basar, the divine sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond what we can conceive. Therefore, we would say between knowledge, divine knowledge, divine hearing, and divine sight, there is a connection in the sense that what is known. So the divine knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses impossibilities, possibilities and necessities. The divine hearing and sight cover everything which is existent. Now what is related is that a Jewish Theologian came to one of the towns of the Muslims in the early period and he said before everything in creation existed What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see with his divine sight? And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hear with his divine hearing? And he said the Jew said I asked many people this question they were unable to answer it so he asked one of the theologians Muslim theologians from that town the Muslim theologian said before the existence of creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his divine attributes existed as they exist now so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to see himself and hear himself so as sam'u wal basar hearing and seeing is connected to whatever exists. So what exists is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His divine attributes, and then whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought into existence. The author states, وَالْكَلَامُ الَّذِي لَيْسَ بِحَرْفٍ وَلَا صَوْتٍ وَيَتَعَلَّقُ بِمَا يَتَعَلَّقُ بِهِ الْعِلْمُ مِنَ الْمُتَعَلِّقَاتِ Divine speech. 
the seventh at attribute from the qualitative attribute, Sifatul Ma'ani. He states divine speech that is not a letter. الَّذِي لَيْسَ بِحَرْفٍ وَلَا صَوْتٍ and neither a voice. وَيَتَعَلَّقُ and it is connected بِمَا with that يَتَعَلَّقُ بِهِ الْعِلْمُ by that which knowledge is connected من المتعلقات. Knowledge is connected to possible, impossible, and necessary. So the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inform us of what is possible, impossible, and necessary. When we recite Al-Quran Al-Kareem, we will read about possibilities, impossibilities, <coughs> and necessary things. So the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is described as not being a letter and not being a voice. This is the divine attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The divine attribute which is established with the self that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not described as being a voice or a letter. The Mu'tazila here also held a divergent view. Their view was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could create, when we say kalamullah, what this means is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates in something speech. When he creates something uh, when he creates speech inside of something, that is termed as being kalamullah. They did not hold the kalam in the way that Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah held the belief regarding the divine attribute of speech. The Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah said, kalam, divine speech, is an attribute which is established with the self of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While they said, it is created. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of something, this is from His divine knowledge. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits or orders us to do something, this is from His divine will. So they said, the Quran therefore is created. And within the Quran, we have divine orders and we have information. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us regarding something, this is from His divine knowledge. When He prohibits something, this is from His divine will. But the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah said, Kalamullah, the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an attribute, an endless, eternal attribute which is established with the self. These are the seven attributes which are known as Sifatul Ma'ani, which were Al Qudra, Al Irada, Al Ilmu, Al Hayatu, Al Sam'u, Al Basaru, Al Kalamu. After this, the author mentions seven other attributes. He states, Thumma sab'u, sab'un yajibu lahu ta'ala. Then seven which are essential for him, the Most High. Thumma sab'u sifatin to summa sifatin ma'nawiyatan. Then there are seven attributes which are known as predicative attributes. These are necessary for the first seven. And they are Allah, the Most High Being, Qadir, all powerful, Muridan, all willing, Aliman, being all knowing, Hayyan, being living, Sami'an, all hearing. Basiran, all seeing, wa mutakalliman, speaking with the divine speech. Why these are known as as sifatul ma'nawiyah, predicative attributes? What this means is that these attributes have an underlying reason. The underlying reason of these attributes are the pre are the seven attributes we have just mentioned, which are sifatul ma'ani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being Qadir, all-powerful, is due to his attribute of Al-Qudra. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having the divine attribute of Al-Qudra, we know that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is Qadir, all-powerful. Because of the divine attribute of Al-Irada, divine will, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Murid, which is the one who wills. 
and due to the attribute of al-ilm, divine knowledge, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim. And because of the attribute of al-hayatu, divine life, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hay. Of course, when we say divine life, this would not mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of a heart or a spirit the way a human being would be alive. A human being is alive with the spirit in the body and the heart beating. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we said, لَيُسَّا كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ الصَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like him. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أحد. That there is no similarity to him. There is nothing that bears resemblance to him. So he does not need a heart or a spirit to keep him alive. وَالصَّمِيعًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being all hearing, due to the attribute of as-sam'u, divine hearing, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being basir and all seeing due to the divine attribute of al-basar. So in, in conclusion, the author has mentioned 20 attributes. But like we said previously, these 20 attributes are not the only attributes for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are 20 attributes which everyone should know, which were initially we mentioned Asifatun nafsiya, which was al wujud, divine existence. Then, Asifatun salbiya, the negating attributes, which were al qidam, al baqa, the eternal existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the endless existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Mukhalafatu lil hawadith, his opposition to the contingent, wa qiyamuhu ta'ala bi nafsihi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the aseyati of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being self established wal wahdaniyah divine oneness these five attributes were known as as sifatu salbiya then we covered the sifatul ma'ani the predicative attribute uh, qualitative attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which were al qudratu wal iradatu wal ilm wal hayatu as sam'u al basar wal kalam and then the Predicative attributes, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being Qadir, Murid, Alim, Hay, Sami, and Basir. These are 20 attributes in total. Next, in the coming lessons, what we will cover? First, we will cover what is impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The impossibilities, Mustahilat. And after this, in detail, we will go over each attribute again, but with the evidence for each attribute. So when covering al-wujud, we will refute atheists. When we will cover al-qidam, we will refute other religions that do not believe in the uh, eternal, uh, eternalness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we will cover al-baqa, we will refute those groups which do not believe in the endless uh, attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will uh, remain forever. They do not believe in this. When we will cover Mukhalafatuhu lil Hawadith, his opposition to the contingent will refute those groups that believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has resemblance to creation. And like this, through every attribute, there are groups that reject certain aspects of each attribute. Now previously also I mentioned Anwa'u Shirk, that Shirk, polytheism is six types and, uh, and the author mentioned this in his book Al-Muqaddimat, short introductions regarding polytheism. The first Shirk was Shirk Istiqlal. This is when someone establishes two independent gods like the Majus, the Magians, they believe in the God who creates good and the God who creates bad. This is blatant shirk, polytheism. If someone believes uh, independence of one creator of another. The other shirk is shirk al-tab'id. This is when someone compounds more than one God as one entity. Like the Christians, they believe in the Trinity, yet they say they believe in one entity, one creator. That one creator is three. But they still say they are monothe monotheistic by believing in three entities in one. So this is known as shir uh, shirku tabaid. Then you have shirku uh, taqrib. 
This is worshipping someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to attain uh, a proximity or closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is like the polytheists before Islam. They would worship the idols and say we only worship them in order to attain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also shirk. Then you have shirk taqlid. This is when someone worships someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blind following other people. This is known as shirk taqlid, the polytheism of blind faith. These four by agreement are kufr, disbelief. If anyone believes in any one of these aspects of shirk, he commits disbelief. The fifth shirk is shirk al-asbab. Shirk al-asbab is associating means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What this means is that some people may believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a nature inside of things and those things then act of their own nature. Now, if the person believes things are acting of their own nature in of themselves without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having created that nature and having created the effect in that thing, then such a person has also fallen into shirk. For instance, the observable universe around us. We as Muslims, as Sunni Muslims, believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates the, uh, the light and keeps the light emanating. But this type of shirk would mean that someone believes the light emanates in of itself. This would be shirk. But if someone holds the position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed the nature of the light inside of it and then it is independent, a type of deism, believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created things and then has left them, then there is dis a dispute regarding his disbelief. This is the belief of the Mu'tazila. They believed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made f fire burn in its nature. So fire burns once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created it as such. While Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'a hold the belief that fire burns and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains its burning. At all times it is sustained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Mu'tazila hold the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed the nature of burning inside a fire and now fire burns independently of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regarding this, uh, Al-Imam As-Sanusi rahimahullah ta'ala uh, states regarding this, فَهُوَ فَاسِقٌ مُبْتَدِعٌ وَفِي كُفْرِ قَوْلًا If someone says such a thing, he is a transgressor, an innovator, and regarding his disbelief, there are two positions, whether he's a disbeliever or not. And the sixth type of shirk is shirk al aghrad polytheism of purpose, which is intention, that when someone does an action for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an action for creation, in this case, the person by agreement is not a disbeliever, but is a sinner. So these were the six uh, anwa shirki that uh, Al-Imam As-Sunusi rahimallah mentions. Next week, inshallah, we will cover the impossibilities for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also usul al-kufri wal bid'ah, the principles of what lead to disbelief and innovation. He mentions seven principles that lead a person to disbelief or innovation. So these today we mentioned the anwa shirk types of shirk. There were a few questions, but before we go on to the written questions, are there any uh, questions from the brothers? The brothers asking regarding the incident with the Jew. The Jew approached a theologian in a Muslim city and said before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in creation what was he looking at and what was he hearing this was his question because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing and all seeing 
So the Muslim theologian responded by saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was looking at his divine self and divine attributes and hearing his divine self and divine attributes. This was the response from the Muslim theologian. Is that clear? Any other questions? Okay, we have a written one. The question is, a mad person is not a mukallaf. What about a mukallaf who rejected the truth, but later he became mad and died as a mad person? In this case, when the mad person would be resurrected, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge him based upon his sa the days of his sanity. When he had sanity and was mukallaf, what decision did he make? The divine judgment will be based on that. With the conditions of the cliff, of uh, tasking, what are the conditions? The conditions are that the person is saying the correct message of Islam reached him. Uh, a mutawatir, mass transmitted aspect of Islam reached him. And in such a case, the person is mukallaf. So if he made the choice of disbelieving while he was sane and then became insane, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge him according to his sanity and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The next question is, uh, quoting Surah Al-A'raf, by the way, Surah Al-An'am, Surah Al-Anfal is chapter number 8 of the Quran, verse 23 of Somebody got a car in the car park. Uh, which citron. Who's got a citron parked in the car park? Okay, thank you. Second. And you when you finish you locking yourself to me? Yeah, we'll lock up. Thank you Suratul Anfal is chapter number eight of the Quran. Check Suratul Anfal verse twenty three. Suratul Anfal verse twenty three. And also in Suratul Mulk. كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم خزنتها لم يأتكم نذير. If you read the Surah Al-Mulk, you will find that whenever a group of people were thrown into hellfire, they will be asked regarding by the guardian of hellfire, did a warner come to you? What do they say in response? قالوا بلى قد جاءنا نذير فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء. That of course, a, a warner came to us and we said Allah has not revealed anything. In the same way, if you check other verses of the Quran, like Surah Al-Anfal, verse 23, you will find interesting verses throughout the Quran regarding the Mukallafin. This question asks regarding the creation in six days. And that the, the Quran, he has a translation. Indeed, your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then he rose over the throne. We know Allah is not contained within time and space and direction. So could the Shaykh enlighten us in regard to this verse? People can misunderstand this verse. The six days of creation is in reference to the created thing. First thing is many people uh, misunderstand the word days being used. In six days. A yam here refers to a period of time. What is the evidence for this? The evidence for this is that Yawmul Qiyamah has been turned, termed as a yawm, a day. Yet we know Yawmul Qiyamah will last for thousands of years according to the years of earth. In the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stating Sittati Ayyam in six days, this refers to a time period. The, cre the time period is not referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the is instantiating, coming into existence of the heavens and the earth. That if someone were to look at the creation of the heavens and the earth, the time period in which they came about could be timed as six periods of time. Is that clear? Are there any other questions? Okay, next week, inshallah, we'll continue.
جز الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما هو أهله جز الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما هو أهله جز الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما هو أهله سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين